gon' step up for me Make sure my fans stay cause my daughter gotta eat I know I ain't perfect Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to the channel Thank you for all of your support you have shown me Throughout the past, the present, and the future And continue to like and share and subscribe to my channel That's right, like, share, and subscribe to my channel Okay um, we got to go into another must-see video. We're talking about the Real Housewives of Atlanta that aired tonight, uh, the 17th, which is Sunday. The uh, title of the show was The Float Goes On. We're talking about season 12, episode 3. Honey, let's get on into the boring part so we can pretty much end it up with some good stuff. And, uh, I mean, it was just exciting somewhat. It was kind of lackluster. Then it got good in the middle and towards the end. But I tell you, that Cynthia Bailey, girl, she is something else. And evil is just going to, I don't know, put her to the side sooner or later. And Cynthia going to be ass out. But anyway, we're going to go on with Cynthia and Eva. They're looking around for houses. Uh, Eva's in this neighborhood, basically, where... You would tell her ass can't afford it, but she's going to make like she needs this, she needs that. The house that they were in, it was very spacious and very pretty. And Eve was like, well, uh, it's okay, but we need to look at some more houses. I'm like, Eva, come on, girl. You're just doing too much. And, of course, they having a little banter back and forth. Eve was talking about Dennis with Cynthia and how uh, things are transpiring between him and Portia and what Portia should be doing and this, that, and the third, and Cynthia saying Nene doesn't uh, take accountability of all her actions, because that was her ride or die chick, you know, she wrote for Nene hard, but Nene don't know nothing about loyalty, good friendship, or any of that, and I'm like, oh, okay, then they started talking about the pride parade, and Noel, and her confession about, you know, she's uh, being with women instead of men, and I don't care. It may it may just be me, but I'm thinking Cynthia was not that warm and open. She had to like fake the funk in a sense for television. But you know, she was just too calm and collected about it, uh, with Noel coming out and all that. And you could tell on her face, you know, she was shocked and she wanted to say some other things, but she was doing the PR stunt, like keeping it politically correct, not really saying what she really feel. You know, or whatever. She's like, oh, I embrace her. I embrace her. And I'm like, Cynthia, go have a conversation off camera with your daughter to truly see if she's just doing it out of rebellion or she's just really experimenting at the time or, you know, she really don't care for men and this is why. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she saw you mess up a couple of times with men, meaning her dad, y'all never got together, never even talked about getting together. None of that. So my assumption, and I might be wrong, I think um, her dad, Leon, is uh, possibly gay. And he just don't want his stuff out there on public social media. If you know, you know from the circles and, and, and how he moved within Hollywood or whatnot with the socialites. They may know, but that, it ain't their business to go out there and tell it. Because I, don't I, I really just don't understand why her and Leon, they were like the perfect couple. Uh, they seem like they're very in tune with each other's persona or each other's uh, demeanor and personality. And I would at least have gotten married. And if it didn't work out, you know, it wasn't all that much of a failure. But she don't really talk about it. He don't really talk about it. And I don't know how hey, no way how she going on this real hot wild of a thing. Uh, uh, you know, being in front of the TV and the camera, she might tell us the story <laughs> about her dad, okay? And I'll be right there listening, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, yeah, I kind of figured it, but since he didn't really say anything, I won't say anything. But I'm just putting it out there, just my opinion. I could be totally wrong. And uh, you, we all see how what happened with her and Peter Thomas. No, it ain't, uh, we can't even imagine what she may have heard by living with uh, Peter and, and Cynthia and the fights they went through possibly over money issues and she probably like maybe me and just turned her off and then her grandmama you know divorced and we probably mad her sister probably was going through some things so I don't think she really was privy to was divorce and messed up uh, relations couple relations relationships you know and dealing with men so that may have turned her off and made her want to just swim in the latest pool and, and get her feel. One thing Noel's not paying attention to is that 
you know, if you're on a same sex partner type relationship, they do the same shit. You know, they cheat, they lie, you know, or whatnot. So it's still going to be the same dynamics, uh, whether you're with the same sex or you're heterosexual. If, you know, people don't want to be faithful, they're not going to be faithful in any type of relationship you may have, whether it's same sex or it's, uh, you know, heterosexual uh, relationship. So, Personally, like I said, I think Noelle is uh, just confused and she may just be angry with me and she just don't want to put up with them. But that's just my opinion. OK, uh, and that's why she's turning to ladies instead of men. But going back, um, it's a bad session going on with Nene Leaks, you know, talking about Cynthia with Marlo. And uh, she really saying too much about Eva, but she's going in on um Cynthia and how she's been acting this, that, and the third. Then we got Portia. She goes over to see Tanya Sands at her house. Tanya's very sweet. Her house is very warming and inviting. And she has this little luncheon set up for her and Portia. You know, take part of and, 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 and let their hair down. And for uh, and especially for Portia to be able to vent. And she can be a listening ear for Portia and kind of try to help her work things through. From being, you know, a female to a female uh, relationship and relating to the situation that she's going through. Now, of course, Tanya can't give her too much. Well, you know, I, I take that back. Tanya probably could because she's in a relationship with her uh, fiance slash boyfriend, whatever. And Portia's not married at this time, so she's still in a like a, a girlfriend boyfriend type relationship leading towards marriage. So she can definitely give her some insight on what to look for. And being the party that's on the outside looking in and taking in all the different sides. So she can truly help Portia kind of make some sense of what's going on with her as far as the betrayal of what Dennis did to her. But, you know, she's going in saying, you know, they went to a counselor and um, Dennis finally admitted to her and the counselor that he cheated and she just had her feel. She couldn't take it no more. So she pretty much ran out of the counseling session and, you know, just doing her thing and just trying to make heads and tails of what she just heard. But, you know, my thing with Portia is she she going to let life teach her a lot of lessons that if she just listened to her mom and other people that have been through the situation or either had her fans, you know what I'm saying, that are really in there and that can tell her that's been in that situation before that, you know, it's not a good situation because unless he addresses what made him cheat. And the reason why you're telling Tanya, Sam, uh, the reason why he cheated was because he felt that Portia wasn't there for her. But then Portia goes back and they take us back uh, through uh, past clips uh, and episodes where Portia has always been there for uh, Dennis. And every up point and down point uh, with him being on the show and that, you know, it was pr pretty much a false uh, excuse he gave her, but yet she's accepting of it. And as we know to this day, after taping was over and we're starting to see what was all filmed for season 12, Portia is still going forward with trying to have a relationship with Dennis. And until Dennis be real upfront with himself and how he sees women, uh, and can he truly be in a monogamous relationship with one woman, Portia's always going to have problems. And if she don't address it from what she can take out of a relationship and what she's going to put up with and look at it from that standpoint, then she's going to always be heartbroken. You know what I'm saying? It's like Portia don't have no type of backbone. Uh, she has the tenacity and the perseverance to go out there and make her dollars. You know, but what is it? What good is it if you're going to still be with a low-down, dirty man that wants to play behind your bag and have whoever he wants to have and then spend your money and use your platform to further himself? So, you know, I'm kind of like torn with Porsche. I just, I'm putting her on the bench on my sofa so she can sit and try to heal and make, you know, uh, sense of all what's going on with her. But like I said, we're here in the present and the future looking forward and it seems like Portia gonna have to let life learn her the hard way about you know dealing with this sort of man because no matter no matter what you say or anything she's always gonna be like I don't know maybe he got good you know head or he got a good penis and he works it right on her and that's just throwing her off 
and she's not looking at the longevity of that sex ain't everything, especially if we fighting about money and prenups and all this stuff. That's going to take the sex and the intimacy out of the relationship because it ain't going to be nothing, you know, there. But, OK, let's get each other off and then you go on your way and I'm going to go my way. But she should be looking at it from a standpoint like that uh, and them working on each other. Instead of them working on each other, they need to work on themselves individually and then try to come back at a point, you know, further on down the road. Instead of planning for a wedding, they should be planning for, you know, getting their heads right on what do they really want. You know, do they see this person uh, in their life to death through the part? You know, naturally, of course. But I don't think neither one of them are really thinking they're going off of feelings, emotions instead of what's solid. Uh, and they're going to use the baby. Of course, she's going to use the baby. She want her dad on the wrong roof. She want her to have her dad on. And, you know, that's just too much to even entertain. And we're not going to go into it. Uh, okay, then we go to Shay. Shay comes over to visit Kenya over in her digs at Moore Manor. And, of course, she wants to see her knee, her well, her second cousin. I guess Kenya's her first cousin. She wants to see her second baby cousin. And, and, and hold on to her and love on her. And Kenya acting like, uh, no, you can look at her. She's priceless. Don't touch her. I don't trust you. All these type of behavior issues I'm seeing in Kenya. And I'm like, girl, something is wrong with you mentally. I mean, seriously, because, uh, I mean, you don't want someone, a woman, because I know you had a hang up with Mark wanting a male to handle his child or hold his child. But I mean, this is your cousin. This is your ace boon coon. You even said in past, uh, when she did appear on the show that that was like your sister so i'm like girl what what is it you don't want nobody to touch brooklyn you think she's gold i don't think i say you hold too close on something hey the lord sees it lord give the lord take away you know i'm just saying you know she is uh you know a, a child she is you know a living breathing uh spirit filled little girl so I'm like, I don't think your cousin would have did any harm to her. But you're like, no, you're not doing this right. No, you're not doing that right. No, just let me handle her. It's like, okay, are you in your mind? Are you? This is what Mark do to you on a daily basis when y'all are together. And now you're just enacting it out on somebody else. Because that's what I'm getting, Kenya. I, I don't know. I, I'm, 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 I'm really thinking about your mentality right now. Not that you're not a good mother or anything, because I don't think that. I think you're a great mother, wonderful mother. You want so much for your daughter up to its bursting out your scenes or whatever. But it's just your demeanor and how you act around Brooklyn and how you don't want anybody else to be around her. So that's kind of like, did your mama isolate you like that? Because... You really are doing some telltale signs that you need some psychological help, seriously. But anyway, moving on from that situation, um, Mark, uh, you know, she goes in and try to talk to Shay after she gets the baby from Shay. She don't walk around with the baby. She don't put the baby in a little scooter thing. So she thinks she's safe from right now. So I guess King and Twirl can't do nothing to it either, huh? But anyway, she goes on to tell Shay that, you know, Mark, she's having a kind of hard, difficult time with Mark, just that and third, and she's waited 47 years to have a baby, have a husband, have a family, and it seems like Mark don't want to have any intimacy with her and, and all this, and uh, he likes the baby to sleep in between them. And I'm like, damn, you know, he don't want you, Kay, your baby girl. You talking and you telling us, but well, are you listening to yourself? Are you really stop, stop, stopping to listen to what you're saying is coming out your mouth? Because it seems like you should be doing other moves than what the moves you're trying to do, which is try to keep this man when he don't want to be kept by you. Okay, boo? And then, you know, it's almost like she's saying to herself, is she becoming to be jealous of her own child because Mark pays more attention to a baby Brooklyn than he does to her. And I say, see, Kenya, that's a dangerous zone you're going into. You don't cross the barrier where you're looking at your child, in a sense, as a threat to your man. Because you're even saying, okay, who going to get him next? I need my time with Mark. So, baby Brooklyn, you need to step away some. So, I'm like, you know, I'm kind of like, I'm not liking it. I'm not feeling it. And, you know, hopefully somebody will intervene and let Kenya know, little baby girl, you might be using this baby as a tool 
to try to bargain well mark can do this that and the third and if you don't if he don't do this that and the third you're going to try to keep the baby away from him you know and he's already on said and you know just well i'm we gonna go we're gonna follow him get into that that's gonna be the latter part because it was juicy it was almost like a telltale sign i'm like damn did this happen to you and you repeating the same thing through your daughter uh I, that's not healthy can you because you see how you acting as a grown person uh, and then Shay goes on and, you know, uh, try to uh, assure her that, you know, things can be worked out if he's willing, if, he, if he's going to be a willing participant in trying to resolve some of these issues. I think y'all will be fine. But if he's not, you got hell on your hands, baby. And that's a decision you're going to have to make. And she even said, well, you know, if you need a babysitter or whatever, you know, I got you. And Kenya was like, oh, <laughs> no, nah, I'm not going to need a babysitter. I, I, I got I got to keep her with me. I'm like, oh, my Lord. I, I don't know about you, Kenya. So we move on from there. We go to Greg and Nene. They're in a photo shoot. They're doing like a PSA, public service announcement, uh, being uh, making people more aware about breast cancer and cancer itself and all those kind of things. And, you know, Nene's going in another pity party. She's pretty much, you know, going from season 11, bringing all this stuff to season 12, uh, you know, talking about Greg's. Uh, cancer, how it was just so daunting on her, and she didn't know what she was gonna do. He didn't know what he was gonna do. She was trying to be supportive of him, this, that, and third. And you know, it's a hot mess. She just basically telling her story, her side, and neat. I mean, uh, Greg is pumping her up, saying, You know, your feelings are your feelings. Yes, you should express them. Forget about what people are saying. Grieve, you must grieve, this, that, and third. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, you know, she's basically talking about the struggle she went through with Greg. And they're ready for her to tape her PSA, her and Greg both upstairs. And they go and they're doing a little preview thing. And, you know, it's just, I don't know. Nene's just talking about her spiritual advisor. And I'm not sure, quite sure who she's talking about. Hopefully it's the Lord. She's getting in prayer, meditating to the Lord, you know, getting spirituality that way. If she's, you know, praying to an object or whatnot, I, I don't know. Because she didn't make that very clear. She did say the Lord one time further on in the episode, but I don't know where Nene's going with her spirituality, but she has, as she says. Uh, and then she goes and tells us a little bit about she tried to reach out to Cynthia uh, by phone, and Cynthia didn't um, get back with her and eventually blocked her. And she said she know what a block looked like, because of course we know you know what a block looked like, Nene, because you don't block several people before the whole cash shit, you know? But, um, She's basically saying Cynthia didn't turn, return her phone call, but Cynthia in a letter episode is saying, you know, she tried to contact Nene, but Nene ain't called her this, that, and third. So we don't know who lying, okay? We really don't. Um, that's pretty much, that was it. Then we go to a little cute scene with Candy and Todd. They're eating at a restaurant, and she's basically going in and telling social media, really, that she did not agree with Todd taking his daughter to a strip club, making it rain on her, this, that, and the third. And, you know, he's pretty much saying, well, that's my daughter. You know, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, you just take care of yours. I'm going to take care of mine. And he goes in to tell Candy uh, about surrogacy, kind of trying to show her up, like, what she ain't doing, what she could be doing, and being more aware of surrogacy. Because, uh, you know, Candy's pretty much going, uh, calling the surrogate lady that's, uh, carrying her child and checking on her and this, that, and the third. And, um, you know, she's just, you know, it, she's just kind of like out of the loop because it is her first time. She didn't know. She only going by what people told her, but uh, about surrogacy and all of that. And so they were planning a baby shower and, you know, he was saying, are oh, you going to invite her so they can come and touch her stomach, this, that, and third. And Karen was like, no, I ain't going to uh, have her out there like no circus acts and people feeling all over her belly and stuff and this, that, and that, that, no, that ain't right. We ain't finna put her out like that. That's private. So he said, oh, you going to be sitting up there letting people, you know, look at you and you ain't pregnant, this, that, and third. And I'm like, tell her, hush, drink, drink some alcohol and, and basically shut the fuck up. Okay, I'm sorry about that, y'all. But he just pissed me off, you know, trying to make her look like she don't know what she doing and she don't know how to raise children. And he telling her, don't get in my uh, child's business. I got that covered. I said, yeah, with well, her money talk. What have you been doing lately? Like Janet just said, what have you done for me lately? Uh-uh, uh-uh. Ooh, yeah. Yes, honey. Yes, that thing. But anyway, Candy was like, boy, 
Uh, and I didn't agree with, you know, because uh, they were also talking about in this mansion she has, which is 500000 she said she paid for the house. And they talking about giving Kayla's room up and making it for the new baby that's coming. I'm like, now nah, can that five hundred thousand dollar home? You talking about you only got your bedroom with you and Tar. Ace got his bedroom, and then um, baby girl Riley got hers, and then y'all had Kayla's. So you saying at that big ass house, y'all only got four bedrooms? Girl, please, I don't understand. Please help me understand. Cause I at least thought you had seven bedrooms and maybe five baths or whatever. But uh, anywho. They're talking about turning her bedroom into one of, of uh, the new baby that's coming in. But then she's like, I don't, I don't like that because, you know, what if she want to come visit us? It's like we're kind of knocking her out of her own room. And uh, Tom's like, well, that's okay because, hey, she going to uh, research or, or feel her dreams in New York City. Okay. And Cam was like, what? He said, yeah, she turned in her car and she... Uh, discussed it with her biological mom and me, and we're gonna let her go to New York. I'm like, Dad, you ain't even let Candy know. And Candy was like, feeling some kind of way, you could tell she was like, You left me out of the loop with this shit. And then, and then I wanted to give her some money, and I don't know what kind of money uh, she was gonna drop on Kayla, but Todd blocked that. He's like, Nah, she don't need no money. I'm like, Damn, you know, but like, you know, hey, it is his child, you can help out as much as they allow you to help out, and it just is what it is. But Candy was like, I ain't with this shit. Um, you might be doing that with Kayla, but with this little girl that's coming that shares and bears your name as well as your genes, honey, I'm going to have an input. I'm going to have a say. So evidently, she must don't really care too much about Ace learning from a man or how to become a man. So she puts up with that, but she definitely has instilled love and values and all that kind of respect in our baby Ace. But yeah, a man can raise a child male, you know, better in a sense where I'm just speaking of the traits of how a man is supposed to carry themselves, how a man is supposed to do this for a lady, and just the essence of a man. Uh, only thing a woman, a woman can do is nurture them, show them love, show them compassion, show those types of building block skills that they're going to need to be able to interact with other people. So, she said, okay, I, I give you A's, honey. But it, when this girl come up in here, don't think you're going to be uh, telling me that you finna take her to a strip club and you finna do all these uh, other un ungodly, unforeseen things because it's not going to happen. I ain't one of them uh, women that's going to sit and let you say everything and I'd be like, okay. I said, girl, she talking about her friend. <laughs> I ain't going to say it's her best friend, but her escape friend, Tiny, over there, how she living and T.I. telling her how to come, how to go, and how... He only make decisions for them kids. Girl, please. She's like, uh-uh. That, no, and that's allegedly. That's just my opinion on how I felt she was trying to get taught to understand that's not going to go here. That's not going to fly with you thinking you're going to make all the decisions for our daughter. I'm like, okay, girl, Candy, go on and put them rules down on that brother. Because evidently, he done bumped his head somewhere. But, uh, yeah, she pretty much got him uh, sold up together. I'm like, well, damn, y'all didn't even buy the car for Kayla. Why is Kayla turning in a vehicle? So, evidently, you must have leased it to her for her. You didn't buy her no car. Because ain't nobody going to trade in no car. They'll sell it and get the money. But you're saying she actually turned the vehicle back in to the um, car people. So, I'm like, ain't that some shit. You only leased that car for that baby girl. And I don't really know what she had. Okay, we know what Riley's driving. She's driving a Porsche, honey. But we don't know what Kayla, hell, I don't know what Kayla was driving before she turned that vehicle in, and he didn't let nobody know either. But anyway, um, moving from there, we go to Cynthia. Cynthia's talking uh, to, I guess, I guess she was talking to herself. But anyway, uh, <laughs> he called, and she was getting ready for, you know, the trip to uh, New York for the the um, Pride Festival, and he's talking to her about everything and how she looks and know well and giving her that uh, platform to be a part of and, you know, she could be with her kind and this and the third. And I'm like, Cynthia, girl, I, no, you're not embracing it. You're just playing the song. You're faking the song on TV for everybody. You're not really comfortable with your daughter saying that she is uh, liking the ladies' pool. She's liking her same sex. But, you know, I'm alone gone. Let you play on it. You know, play on work. I'm sure it's going to show one day that you weren't as accepting, but you felt like you needed to be accepting of it. And 
you know, you, you, you're not going to be doing your PR stunning right then and there, okay? But anyway, um, yeah, Mike is, you know, seemed like it was a fake scripted scene. Like, he pretty much coached Cynthia on, like, you know, I'm going to call at this set time, and when they film it, you know, you need to say this, that, and the third, but I'm just going to open it up and say, well, okay, if you see Nene at the Pride Parade, which I'm sure you will, how you going to handle her? <laughs> And then she went up in her little acting or whatever you call it. I like she can't handle Nene, honey. You put her out there with the uh big dogs. Cynthia can't even handle uh she uh Riley or no way. What the hell you talking about? No way and uh Riley can get Cynthia together. Shit. But anyway, uh, you know, she go on and try to pump herself up like, you know, hey. I ain't with that stuff. I ain't with that. I ain't with, I'm like, girl, please. And Nene Show walked up to her behind at the end of the episode. And Cynthia was looking like, uh-oh. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, Cynthia, what you going to say? But what are you going to say? But anyway, we got uh, another scene coming in where Mark is here. He's in the scene. He's making things happen. But before we get to that, because I really want to end up with that. Basically, Marlo and Nene are together, and Eva and Cynthia are together at the parade. And, of course, uh, Eva is basically watching an interview, the same interview that uh, Cynthia caught on, where Nene is pretty much uh, sewing her up from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, and ain't nothing good coming out. It was just a negative conversation. Nene was on there calling. She was doing an interview with someone, and they were asking about the Real Housewives of Atlanta and how she's fared with some of the ladies, and she's really tearing into Cynthia, saying Cynthia's weak. Uh, she's desperate looking, just that and the third. And, of course, Eva and uh, Cynthia are talking about it and whatever. And, and uh, she said, when I was Nene, uh friend, I was telling her that wig was, you know, not right for her. You know, it was a struggle wig, but she ain't listened to me. You know, it's like she's just totally throwing Nene under the bus for us for entertainment purposes. And I'm like, it, it not even sounding right. You know what I'm saying? Hush, Cynthia, hush. And then um, Marlo and uh, Nene are in another room getting ready and everything. And Marlo trying to prep her on what to say in case she does run into Cynthia and, and Eva, how she's going to approach them. You know, Nene talking about she's talking to her spiritual advisor. And, you know, they good and she's spiritual. She's doing her zen and all of this. And she's saying Cynthia did seven uh, interviews, dialing her out and this, that, and third. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight it with the a word of God. I'm going to love on her regardless. And I'm like, you know, that was just too fake to even watch there, too. But going into the last part of The Real Housewives of Atlanta was the meat and potatoes episode. MVP was definitely candy, getting on tall ass, talking about what she ain't going to expect. From Todd with this female daughter coming, she's gonna do what she got to do to make sure her input is very well heard. Okay, and Todd ain't got nothing to say, even though he think he got a lot to say. But all this stuff he been doing negatively, being shown in social media with his eldest daughter, it ain't gonna happen with her daughter that she's having with him. So he might well get used to the new sheriff in town. That's Candy Burrs. Okay, but we're gonna go back and talk with about Kenya these last couple of minutes. Um. Mark comes in, greets Kenya in the kitchen with the baby. He ain't giving her no hugs. He ain't giving her no little kisses on the cheek, on the forehead, hell on the lips. You know, he going to come in to see what the, what she got for the baby to eat. And I'm like, what's wrong with your hands or whatever? She's, you know, addressing him all warm and uh, not motherly, but wifely. And he ain't paying too much attention to her. He's trying to figure out what she going to cook for them. And, of course, you know, he's like, well, I don't know what we got in here because we ain't been here. And she pretty much saying the same thing. But she goes in and talks about she's going to cook him some uh, eggs and, and, I don't know, bacon, I guess, and some hot cakes. Okay. And he's like, okay, okay. But he like, he ain't paying attention to nothing Kenya is talking about. Okay. Uh, <coughs> she, uh, I guess he's mad because she didn't have no eggs for him. But I'm like, come on now. And then she's like, okay, well, we got love. We ain't got the S. He, he didn't even look at her. He didn't address her. It was just like she wasn't there. And then she goes on to talk about, you know, what we're going to do for your birthday and this, that, and third. He said, well, uh, I really don't know. And then she said, well, we might have to get a babysitter for Brooklyn. He said, I'm Brooklyn coming with me. Brooklyn is here all day, every day. She's my number one. 
And, you know, of course, it was rubbing Kenya the wrong way. She's like, what if we want to have some intimate time? He said, we don't have an intimate time. We're going to have Brooklyn with us. <laughs> he said, we ain't going to have nothing. If, if Brooklyn can't come, I won't be there myself. So it was just a hot mess. It was just a hot mess how he was treating Kenya. And I was like, Kenya, now you got all this power and all this mouth to talk to women and bring them down. But your so-called husband that you don't married and carried on, he treating you with less compassion than he would show an aunt, okay? Or aunt or a rope, China. And he'd be like, oh, let me step on them or whatnot. And it's just like, uh, Kenya is a, 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 what do you call it? A, 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 damn, his Achilles heel, a thorn in his side, anything bad you can think about an individual. That's how he got, and he looks at Kenya. And I'm like, okay. If this is not true and it's just a part he's playing to make us believe that he don't really care about her and he just want to get out the situation so she can be free to say, well, y'all see how Mark treated me? How could y'all want me to stay in a situation like that? You know, giving us a, an excuse was this fictitious that he was playing up for the cameras for her and for him to get out this said contract of a marriage uh, with her. Or is it true to form that they truly are married and he's treating her this way? I'm like, why is he being so mean? Why is he being so negative towards her? I mean, damn, if you don't want to film, just say you don't want to film. You know what I'm saying? It's just an over type thing. And then can you just have to choose? You're going to have your fairy tale, wedding, uh, marriage, baby, wife position. Or you want to just go on and be on TV and show people whatever you want to show them. But honey, he was a piss poor ass of a husband that you can possibly have and can you're gonna have some mental issues continue to fool with that man if it is in true uh factual marriage or not but that's all i had honey i'm like uh -uh, can you girl you could do better you could do better but you could do bad all by yourself but my whole thing is i don't want you to take it out on baby brooklyn because it seems like more so, you're going to take it out on Brooklyn because you're not getting the time that she's getting from her dad. And as she grows up, as she gets older, you know, he's gonna, that's going to be his favorite one. He done pretty much said, you, I don't know what number you is in my life, but you ain't number one. You damn sure ain't number two. And then he wants to be sleeping with Brooklyn in the middle of y'all. Girl, can you better look at the coffin and smell it, honey. Smell them roses because that man don't give two shits about you, okay? So you need to stop putting him up and putting him on a pedestal like he loves you and all like this when he definitely ain't showing you nothing but sourpuss. That's what he's showing you, the sour face. Like, let me out this marriage where I really tell them what's really going on. Or maybe it is a true marriage and he, I don't know, you done did something. You done made him come be a part of something he wasn't wanting to be a part of and he's just not happy. But I don't know, y'all get in them comments and tell me what y'all thought about this video, what the subject matter and how Mark has treated her thus far. Should she stay in the marriage or should she get the hell out? <laughs> is she going to make Brooklyn pay for her uh, non-intimacy and non-relationship that she really has with Mark? Is she going to turn into what her mother is? Or is can you going to turn into a mother and treat her daughter like her mother treated her? I don't know, y'all. It, it, it's too deep for me to go into it because I ain't no psychologist or no psychiatrist, but I can definitely see she needs help mentally, okay? But that's all I have for this video. Again, it was season 12, episode 3. The title was The Float Goes On. Okay? And I'm like, the beat goes on. The beat goes on. And the beat goes boom. Boom, boom. Okay, I'll see y'all next video, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.